I don't even know what my hair looks like. Good? It always looks good. Come on. So... Okay, server. So... What you want to talk about? Um, I guess we're going to talk about how societal norms make you broke. Hmm. Are you a victim of society norms? Call 1-800-SO-WHAT-YOU-WANT-TO-TALK-ABOUT-PODCAST. <laughs> I mean, your number's on the website. They can, they can call you. Yeah, they can call me. Call you. I'm busy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about it. All right, so what are societal norms? Okay, so we figured out societal was a real word. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay, I didn't look it up. You lazy. I just forgot about it until now. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Societal, norms. if that's not a word, but societal, if it is a word, norms. Let's talk about what it. What are the things that have become normal in society that make people broke? The first one definitely is, like you said, having a car payment, having a nice car, or a car in general. Well, which one did we just talk about? In episode 11. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen that, make sure you go look at it. Season 1, episode 11. Mm-hmm. We talked about college. College. And student loan debt. Student loan debt. Yeah. All right. So you got a vehicle. Mm-hmm. You got overpriced education. But we can talk a little bit about college. Like, you shouldn't get loans. Yeah, what about? Like, you shouldn't take loans out. Society has set it up where they want you to go to school. It's been programmed into our minds as kids. There are shows on TV that look down on the person who doesn't go to college and pushes college as a path. Like that's I say there's whole whole families that shun people mm -hmm. for not going to college. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. so that's just a little bit of that. Not everybody has to go to college or should go to college. They should some people should learn a trade. Some people should be entrepreneurs. Some people just don't need to go to school if it's not required for a specialty purpose. So moving to number two, vehicles. Um, so yeah, car payments put people in debt, but it's been pushed on us as a society that we should have the nicest car. Like we should, we are what we drive. You know, um, that's the first thing people see when you pull up, if you're trying to do like sales calls and stuff, like what kind of car is that person driving? Like it really matters. Um, so I drive a 2001 car. Mercury Sable. It's a 2001. Like, it's over 20 years old. That's right. Still kicking. Knock on wood. But yeah, it's still kicking. Um, uh, I'm not, but I don't have a car payment, so I'm not tied down to, um, that payment every month. Some people's car payments is as much as their mortgage or their house or rent. Like that's a lot to me. Um, I don't ever plan on having a car payment. If I gotta get a bike, I will. But I'm not having a car payment. What about you? So society has made it where going to college is a societal norm or having a brand new vehicle with a payment is a societal norm. Mm -hmm. What else? What else is a societal norm? Uh, I guess kind of like branching off and living on your own by yourself and a, having mm -hmm. like a huge house with extra space that you don't need. So moving out at 18. Moving out at 18, for sure. Getting a place of your own. Mm -hmm. Even though you may not be able to afford it yet. 
-hmm. and maybe more than 40% of your income. But like, that's what I'm saying. So here's the thing. If you really think about it, how, what kids, I mean, I was working at 15, but I feel like normal people aren't working at 15. If your mom legit was like, bye, see ya, if you didn't go to college at 18, would you be able to afford to live re like live in your own spot? Do you think you would have been able to do that? I mean, me personally, I was able-bodied, so I could have worked construction. But I mean, I right at okay. 18, right yeah. at 18, though, would you be able to like, okay, you're 18, I'm kicking you out of the house, you have to live on your own support yourself I'm no longer helping you like I don't I just don't see how that is like a good norm that we are supporting you know what I'm saying like why do we why has why did people ever support that as a societal norm I really don't understand right but that's my boy well I think most people have a problem with once they turn 18 about following somebody else's rules. That's a societal norm too. Yeah. Because they've been told that they're 18, they can do what they want. They can make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's like a catch-22 on both sides. Because I know if I didn't have a job and had been working at 15, I wouldn't have been able to buy a car because my parents were going to buy one for me. I wasn't going to have a car. If I didn't, I went to college. So they. it's almost like going to college just kind of like excuses the fact that you should be taking care of, to be in, ta you know, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like it, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like the, it's like going to school from as a kid, you drop your kid off at school eight to five or whatever the time is. And then I might have to go to after school, but they're the school's responsibility. Mm -hmm. So at 18, it's almost like your parents are saying you're the school's responsibility. I mean, if you think about it like that, I'm just saying, I don't know if that's really how parents feel. I'm just saying it kind of seems like it because it's like, you know, we're all in debt from college because no one could support us to go to college. We had to get our own loans. We had to do our own thing. Now we're all in debt from it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because you're not like really responding back to me on that. Yeah. That's a societal norm too. Yeah, we already got past that. We already have a whole video on that. College. That's true. <laughs> I'm just but saying. But you want to reiterate a... that, yes, college is not for everyone. Yeah, and no. That you shouldn't be going to college if you can't afford to pay for it. That you should do a trade and then work your way through college at night or I'm so, online I, or I think whatever. It, I think it just stems from. If you want to get up higher. I think it just stemmed from me talking about having a car, a car and a house payment. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't have been able to afford to have a house payment unless I took a loan out from going to college and that's how I was able to pay my rent. Right. So it's like... So you're trading it from a good debt, which is debt for a house, a place to live, to a bad debt, which is student loan debt. Right. Which is a societal norm, which is terrible. The worst exactly. That's my worst that's my societal norm that you have. But at the same time, you could go to college and have three roommates and house hack and have housing for free. If, yeah, if we had the opportunity to do that, we probably would have done that. I was I couldn't afford a house at 18. Not, nobody would have gave well, me a loan. it's not even that. Back, I mean, back when I went to college in 2005, they were giving dogs houses. Now, I had no idea about this because I wasn't knowledgeable of how, the housing market at That's the time. That's true. But I could have got a, got a house in my dog's name back then. Hmm. Well, you could have. I, I'm younger than you, so that opportunity wasn't presented for me. Yeah, 2007, <laughs> the opportunity might have gone away by then. So <laughs> you missed out on the opportunity. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm yeah, just absolutely. playing. No, but for real, I mean, so yeah, that's, that's where I was getting at too. Going into debt for a house that you can't afford... Even if you were to get the mortgage on a house, like if there's only one of you, you don't need a, you know, 3,000 square foot house unless you're going to rent rooms out of it. 
You know, so you, you shouldn't live outside your means. Getting a huge house just for yourself, that's a societal norm. And that's, right. that's, that's what's the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Like you got this big empty house for yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you filled it you filled it full of junk. Right. Because society Each room's gotta have a bed, each room's gotta have a dresser, each room's gotta have a TV. That's true. Because you may or may not have that occasional guest that your fam that your family or your friends come spend the night and see you, which probably is is unlikely that they're they will because they all have lives too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so if you're that's my thing, like society made it a norm that you should basically like be 20 you should be right when you turn 25 you should have a kid be married have a kid move into a home a big home and grow your family and raise your family in this immaculate house that you should have gotten because you have a traditional nine to five job that pays you so well mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know what i mean so i i mean it just no just, That's oh, a societal norm that for sure makes people broke. Right? Right. They also don't want you to house hack your home because that's not normal either. So it's not normal for... That's scary. You have a stranger in your home? Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You don't... You don't... You feel safe sleeping at night? There's These are the questions you get asked if you house hack. I could never do that. That's why you broke. <laughs> no but I mean those are the questions you get asked when you do stuff like that that's non that's a non-traditional way you know to mm -hmm. to live um what's another one mm, so which ones do we have so far we got college college car house so oh, about, I kind of I kind of touched on the traditional job thing. Do we need to go traditional into more job, detail? No, traditional more detail. jobs making you broke? Yeah. Um, I mean, not necessarily it, on that one. I mean, just a just a touch on it. Every I mean, I'll, every, like ninety percent of people are told that they should find when they are young find a great employer. That's what I was told when I was young. That was passed down from my family to me. Find a great job. Find a great employer. They'll take care of you. That was tradition, though. Mm -hmm. You know, work, work until you're 65. Then at 65, you can retire, live off of your money, and be happy and not have to worry about anything. Oh, it definitely became very evident during the pandemic the employers were going to take care of themselves mm -hmm. before they took care of their employees. Mm -hmm. Most employers. Most. Right. There are some exceptions that did some exceptional things. And you know, kudos to, to them. To take care of their employees during those times. And, and that's you know, amazing. And that's great. And they should, and that honestly should have been the social norm. That should definitely should have been a social norm. Yeah. But it wasn't. Absolutely not. Um, but I mean, during the recession, that's when you kind of saw how the shift of employers taking care of their employees in 2000, like you said, 2008, at least during when the time we were, were alive to be able to recognize it, people were getting laid off, homes were being taken, mm -hmm. like people just didn't care about other people. And then you started to realize like, why am I going to spend 25 years in a job that doesn't care about me? And like, I literally have, you know, I mean, I've known people that literally have worked 20 years for somebody. They're five years from retirement and they get cut. Yeah, they cut them. They cut them. Like, bye, see ya, we don't need you anymore. And then their job gets reposted five months later. Like, why am I going to work hard? For some, you know, I mean, well, I'm gonna if I'm gonna pick an employer, I'm gonna pick an employer that takes care of me and gives me incentives to take care of them. Exactly. So the harder I work, the better off I am, and the better off the company is. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people in our generation's mindset has has changed. Like 
and they say we we job hop or whatever no like we're not gonna spend 20 years and be treated horrible without you know we're gonna find someone else we're, we want to just be happy like we don't want to wait 20 years to be happy like we want to be happy now so if there's another opportunity a better opportunity out there like our generation we're it's gone gonna, it's gonna try to find we're it. gonna find it whether that's working for somebody else working for ourselves working with somebody and collabing at you know with a different leader that's what we're gonna do right absolutely uh, anything else i say what well, and i don't know about most people personally, but big city life has never been for me. I was born in a big city and yeah. I was cool yeah. with not going back. <laughs> yeah. Like the constant stress of having to drive mm. through stop and go traffic. That was a norm too. Taking, taking 30 minutes to go everywhere you need to go or mm -hmm. more. So I personally believe in buying back your time. You know, so if you have a job, you want to be able to be within a couple minutes living wise of where that job is. Mm -hmm. So you're not spending your time driving back and forth. You know, and some people that's their like, that's their mental break time between job their, and their family life. It's like their downtime. But I can find other ways to have downtime besides driving back and forth to work and stop and go traffic, hmm. you know? Yeah. So I prefer to live at the beach. Yep. Um, simply for that reason, you know? Yeah. So that's a, you know, a, a difference in societal norms Excuse me. is that I say everybody knows that song you know, we got a fast car, right? No, can you sing it for everyone? We got a fast car. I got a plan to get us out of here. Been working at a convenience store. Plan is to make a little bit of money. Don't have to drive too far. Just cross the border and into the city. You and I can both get jobs. Find a way without me to be living in something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Oh, okay, yeah. so now everybody knows. Everybody's up to date. Yeah, so that's like, that was even in music. Go to the city, make a bunch of money. Get mm -hmm. out of this small town. Mm -hmm. When now to me, I'm coming back to the small town. An even smaller town than even, where you're from. An even smaller town than where I'm from. And uh, trying you know, to build. De-stress your life, right? Like, there's no reason to be in constant eight hours a day of stress mm -hmm. or even you know, if you're driving back and forth then that's 10 hours of stress you know so that societal norm and that societal norm makes you broke too because you're spending money driving to work and driving back maintenance on a brand new vehicle mm -hmm. that you're paying six hundred dollars a month with insurance and generally, big city life is a lot more expensive than small town That's life. true, so you're paying more for something the to eat, something to drink. You yeah. know, you're, if you have a big time job in a big time city, you're probably going to big time restaurants in the middle of the day. You know, eating big time meals, expensive meals with your colleagues. Like, that, all that adds up, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, so... So another thing that makes people broke is big extravagant expenses for one-time things, such okay. as birthdays, mm. holidays, yeah, anniversaries, mm -hmm. stuff like that. People, when I was young, my mom wanted the biggest Christmas tree that we could find, and if that Christmas tree was a hundred bucks, then we was getting it. You know, mm -hmm. but that's a one-time thing. To be fair, 
And it's a beautiful Christmas tree. Don't get me wrong. Well, I'm just saying, to be fair, you and your mom are both Sagittarius, so they y'all like big extravagant things, experiences. Yeah. So maybe that hundred dollars was worth it to your mom to see the look on y'all's face when y'all were a kid to see how big this Christmas tree was. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, my family's like that too. Like we we go big, they go big all the time, and it's it's un sometimes it's unnecessary because it creates un realistic expectations for the children growing up like they just ex it's not anything special anymore it's almost expected right so it's not you know what i mean so it's not like like oh my mom always does this every year or our family always goes to the bahamas every year mm -hmm. um this is just normal you can come if you want yeah i want to come because that's not normal for me like <laughs> Uh, you can take me with you and I'm sitting here going through, you know, experiencing all these new things that I never or I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do. And I'm sitting here being grateful for it because it's not something that I experience every day of my life. You know? Mm -hmm. like, well, so there's people out there that'll spend whole paychecks on Christmas. Mm. On Christmas presents. We already talked about this. If we have a family or when we have a family, it's going to be... It's going to be going to like the soup kitchen, volunteering, yeah. spending some hour, some time of giving back. And then maybe we'll give like one present of something that they need. That's an asset. But other than that, it's going to, it's not going to be this. Let's give each person equal amount of presents in their spot. 500 presents per kid. I appreciated that. I mean, like I'm just saying, I appreciated getting presents as a kid um, looking back at it now, like I appreciate all the effort our parents put into doing that for us. Cause you're, I mean, they still do that for us, mm -hmm. but at the same time, as a kid, I, you know, seeing kids now do it. I was probably one of those kids too, that played with the kid, the gift one time, or there was so much going on that I couldn't focus on the one gift that I got that actually was great, a great gift. Mm -hmm. So I missed out, you know what I mean? Like I missed out on experiencing that one present because I had 30 other presents laying out that I had to play with each one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's overwhelming. And, you know, it just... I'd rather not go into debt to buy things. Right. They say now, like, experiences are everything. So, like, going on a trip, like, I'm going to spend my money on trips instead of things. That's okay, too. But at the same time, it's still spending unnecessary money sometimes for an experience that you're maybe not ready for. If you don't have the money financially to go, you shouldn't be putting on a credit card for right. the experience. You know, you have to be able to pay that back. Like that experience still needs to get paid back. So if you don't have the money to do it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, that's you, probably a, a tough pill to swallow, but I what I'm saying you go to a, on a trip and you go to a five star restaurant, and you at that five star restaurant, and you're just trying to find the cheapest thing on the menu. That's not really living the experience mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, you know, I'd rather be sitting with the assets to pay for whatever experience, experience I want to have, and then go big with it. Yeah, and then go big with it. Yeah. So. Yep. So what's a, another societal norm? Sorry, is to get out of debt before investing. Mm. Is that not what Dave Ramsey says to do? That's a Dave Ramsey principle, yeah. Mm -hmm. That you should not be investing while you're still in debt. But it's like, how are you gonna get out of debt if you can't take, if you don't take a little bit of risk investing in something that could pop off if you do your research enough? You know what I mean? To mm -hmm. see if it's gonna grow, if it's gonna get bigger. Well, my point is you take so say instead of buying a five hundred dollar Christmas gift, you take you buy a twenty dollar gift, mm -hmm. and you take the hundred the four hundred eighty that you were gonna spend on the Christmas gift and invest it. Yeah, you know? I mean I could see I could see that. Instead of take having a five hundred dollar a month car payment, mm. you take you know that five hundred dollars a month and put it in an investment account. 
Look, I feel like you people, drive a beater car. I feel like people are going to start doing that, especially after this pandemic and stuff like that, because I've already seen, not saying everyone, but I've seen at least two people post that they traded in their new vehicles that they got right before the pandemic, and they just did it recently. Yep. They traded their cars in, and so they down can eliminate rate, a car rate. payment. Yep. Yeah, like if you're not, if you're working from, you know, 70% of people are still working from home, I think. You're, I mean, I don't know you the don't percentages. Need, you definitely don't need a you car don't need if you're it. working from home. Like, for what? <laughs> to be flashy in the driveway? Like, yeah, exactly. So I think people are starting to, like, pick up on these things now. And I mean, the car industry better watch out because that's what's going to happen. Lower your cars and I might get me one. <laughs> but until then, skirt. Nope. <laughs> But yeah, you're, you're, you're missing out on, because the, the key to investing for, for the long term is time in the market. You know, if, and then you want to take, you know, some fun money and put it into things that you, you know, individually like, like a Tesla or an Apple or, you know, so say if you use Apple computers, you know, Put a little bit in that. You go to Starbucks every day. Put some in Starbucks. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're giving back. And you're buying it, and then you you're know. buying it again <laughs> by using Th their product. Things that you use, you know, mm -hmm. you invest in them. You know, you know, and it it uh, you have ownership in what you're using, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's one mistake. Uh, that people have for sure is that is you know if you it's like for me in student loans it might take me 10 years to ever be without a student loan payment or longer or longer so if I waited 10 years to invest in the market you just I'm, missed out I might lose half a million dollars yeah you missed out on a bunch of opportunity to you know be able to pay it off by yeah. investing when that student loan is at 5% interest mm -hmm. or 4% interest, you know, it doesn't yeah. make any sense to double down on that student loan and not invest. Now, ideally, you know, you get really good at investing, mm -hmm. have some success with it and take that money and pay down the student loan. But, you know, not everybody's going to have the time to put into that. But, if you do, great. Mm -hmm. You know. I got another societal norm. Oh no, what is it? Big weddings. Oh yeah. Good the average wedding is thirty three thousand dollars, people. Did you look that up? Yes. Today? Today, yeah. Why? Why did I look it up? Yeah. Um look researching this video. Oh. we you knew we were gonna talk about weddings? I knew it was one of the things people waste a bunch of money on. Oh, okay. Uh, we didn't talk about that. That's why I was like, oh, wow. We're on the same page, but just we didn't communicate it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, weddings. For sure. Um, and I think this year, weddings are going to be even bigger because a lot of people last year missed out on the opportunity, either postponed their wedding, did a shotgun wedding, like went to the courthouse because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they now have... they're going to go big. Yeah, now they're going to like... Well, the average salary in... In America, in the United States of America, is fifty thousand dollars. If the average Dang. wedding is thirty three thousand, you're. I mean, even if you put the two salaries together, it's like it's three fifths of your yearly income on one event. You know, that's. Crazy. I wanted to use the curse word. I'm like, you got me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be one to spend thirty three thousand dollars on a wedding. Yeah. But yeah, that's what people do. I mean, drive I, down to the beach, walk out there, say I do, and leave. It's free. Yeah. You know? It's just, well, I mean, I get it. Cause Go some, to the lake. Some traditions, walk out though. There, say I do, and leave. Yeah. This is like for. Most church fellowship halls are free. This is for people who don't have. Like, okay, so for example, we've been to weddings that have been sponsored. So, like, oh, the yeah. family members all come together and sponsor a part of the wedding. Like, someone sponsored the the um, DJ. DJ. So, if someone in the family has a DJ, they'll they'll give their service for free. 
Mm -hmm. And that also helps them with advertising themselves to their guests that are invited to the wedding. So everybody's specialty, and I love that. Like, it gives me, like, I'm literally getting the chills thinking about it because I think that's the best way if you're trying to go and have, like, a, the best wedding, the biggest wedding, all-out wedding, like, Fi talk to your family members, talk to your friends that will help you out and sponsor things for your wedding. Like, don't just be like, let's Google the closest DJ in this area and hope that they're great. You know, like, why don't you use your friends and family that have talents that could contribute to, to your wedding yeah. for free? Or, you know what or I mean? Or a reduced price. Or at a reduced price. Yeah. You know, whatever. Because you do want to support your family finance like with you know financially but what i'm saying is is that utilize that the talent that dj that your family went to that wedding there may be four or five other weddings that, that he gets from just if being he does at a your good wedding job. yeah exactly you know um that's what i'm saying you got a family member that has a nice backyard like there's your event space you know it's just but most people are going into debt to get married. To get married. When it's unnecessary. Just saying. Especially since there's a 50% divorce rate now. Mm. So you not only are they going in debt, the number one reason people get divorced is money issues. And you're already starting out in the and negative. And you're starting out <laughs> $33,000 in the negative. That's horrible. Yeah. On purpose. On purpose, yeah. <laughs> Just so you have this uh, storybook dream wedding. Yeah. You know. So if you can find other people to pay for it, I'm all about it. But if you're, you and your husband are paying for it, I'm not about it. Done. Nope. Oh, mm -mm. mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. I mean, there are some people that saved up their whole lives. If you saved up your whole life because you knew you were going to have a dream wedding. That's cool. And you're not going to miss that money. Cool. Do it. Do you, boo? I'm a, I want to watch it on the TLC special, but other than that... <laughs> I want to watch it on the TLC special. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. TLC has created oh, societal norms that put people in debt, too. I that's mean, funny. I used to love watching Say Yes to the Dress. Love it. These dresses were three, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And I thought, well, that's what I want, too, because the TV's telling me that. And the more and more I watched it, the more and more I was like, there's no way that I could ever like justify spending three, four, five, ten thousand dollars on a dress I'll never wear again. And if I already had someone lined up to buy it, I would buy it and then resell it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, like I'm just that's not my thing. Like I'm not gonna spend that much money on a dress that to wear one day. And never to wear again. And never wear again. And some people say, well, I wear it every year. I go in the closet and see if it fits. Y'all are weird. There are people that do that. Mm. And just saying, I like weird people, but y'all are weird. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> or the people that buy the dress before they even found somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's manifested. They manifest in their they dreams. They manifest in their dreams. <laughs> That's a true manifestation of their wishes and dreams right there. And then they get married and it lasts one day. Dang. <laughs> a that sounds like a, a storybook wedding. <laughs> um, yeah. I might need to write a book about that, huh? Maybe. But yeah, I think... Is you there definitely anything else? You definitely shouldn't be overspending on weddings. No. Is there anything else? Well, you already touched on... A traditional job, mm -hmm. but why is a why is the traditional job? Why shouldn't it be the social norm? Why do you think? Because it's small thinking, right? Mm. As you yeah, think, it's small. yeah. So, thinking small shouldn't be a social norm, like or thinking inside the box or being limited, limited, limited. This thinking. is what okay. This is what this is what I want to talk about really quick. Okay. So me and Mackenzie were talking mm -hmm. and she had showed me this article, I was reading an article about a 17 year old girl. Mm. I don't know if you heard this story yet. 17 year old girl that invented, invented suture strips that will tell you based on the dye color if your um, 
sutures are infected. They turn a different color. Okay. So when she was so 15, so two years ago, before the pandemic. So she's got enzymatic co color change in the, in she, the sutures. And she used beets. Cool. She used beets. Okay. Beet juice or something like that to to, to do it. Like, because it changes with your acid and base of the, okay. you know, infection. Oh, it's so it's that's super not cool. Then. That's no, not no, no, no. It's okay. super cool. But so the point was of this. That's based on pH. Yeah, pH and acidity. Because okay. if your infection, your body, I think your body's base level is at a five. Hmm. But this strip, if you're, if you have an infection, the strip, the infection is like a nine acidic level. Okay. Or something like that. So it's basic. It, yeah. Okay. So, I, and I could be getting my numbers wrong. I could be getting the that the details. The, the details wrong. But anyway, she came up with a way to figure out that people could tell. That's big thinking. That's big thinking. But let's. So she she entered it through a science fair project before the pandemic. It got into like the top fifty hmm. projects across the world, like the nation or whatever. And then now she's working on getting a patent for it. And she said in her article that if she didn't have the time to work on it, like because COVID or whatever, they mm. went virtual. She spent five hours a day in her lab at home working on, it. working on this project and this concept to like make it real and make it work. She would have never, if she was still in school, she would have never had, she like literally said that I would never have the time to work on this. Like, like this wouldn't have saying, been a thing. You're saying traditional school was making you broke. I think yes. Oh, I think that too. I think that too. Like that was my whole point Small. to work it in, and because again, it's limiting. It's limiting your creativity. It's it, limiting it, it, your time. Your time. To be creative. Yeah. Because what memorizing happens? Memorizing junk that you don't need. You go to school. Eight. As you're literally there, pretty much eight to three, eight to four. And if you're younger kids, you're there a lot longer because you your parents. Sports, you're there till six thirty, seven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. But your parents are working, so you get home, you do your homework that's assigned to you already. No creativity there, and then you eat dinner and you go to bed. Mm -hmm. Like she said, she would get her homework done, or she'd get her schoolwork done, her traditional schoolwork done in two hours, and then she would have the rest of the day to work on making this idea into fruition and she's mm -hmm. patented patented it Patent? she filed for patents she filed for patents <laughs> <laughs> she patented it um it's called patent pending yeah it's real that was when Mackenzie read that to me I was like I said awesome. my kids are never going to school <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean I just it just kind of proves that I said after a certain age I think like 13 or 14 after like the eighth grade, I don't think s s school is that. Like what after that? What what else is there to learn? I pretty much you learned everything that you're gonna need you to should, know. You should have been able to learn the things that you need to survive. After fourteen, you're learning the skills that you're gonna use in your career. In my opinion, that's how it should be. In your career, yeah. yeah. But if you don't know what you want to do, how are you gonna learn the skills you need? Then you're testing it out. You're going to be intern somewhere. Yeah, so schools should out. change their focus a little bit on on accommodating you know. creativity and allowing time for you to work on your creativity. Like that was super creative. And that traditional school is is centered around is centered around the Coliseum. So, know what that means. so basically, you want to keep the masses distracted, right, from what's really going on in the world. Mm. So, everything is centered around sports. Mm. So the you know, the best years of a kid's life are when they're playing football or baseball or basketball, fourteen to eighteen. Because if you're sitting in school on a chair for eight mm -hmm. hours, like that's not exciting. You put them in sports, mm -hmm. like that's exciting for them. And then they're, you know, and then the parents and the community, they're all coming together to watch going to the games, you know, mm. yeah. And they're not thinking about how crap their, their job was that day or, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's a distraction, a moment of happiness and joy. And but anyways, I, just, I had to share that story. I thought it was super cool. Yeah, like, I was, was like, absolutely really shook over that story.
anyways. What else? But yeah, most people, sh most kids probably shouldn't be still in school, still in high school 18. They're smart enough to have known financial education and try to start learning their trade mm -hmm. far before then. Yeah. So. So traditional education keeps you poor. You should always be learning more, always wanting to know more. Whatever your interests are, you should be exploring them because maybe you can monetarily take advantage of that later on down the road. Like that girl with her patent, like she built that to help people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially, she said, you know, there are some countries that it would benefit people in, in, in other countries a lot more because they don't have access to medical supplies and a lot of, there's like a certain percentage of people that have, that get infected and then it spreads through their body. Don't know percentages, but that could happen. And I mean, she, she, she didn't do that idea to make money off of it. She did it to help people, but eventually it's going to turn into something that she'll make money off of to help people or donate. Like, that's what it just it's crazy if she didn't have the time to sit there and work on it then this wouldn't have been a thing and she wouldn't have been able to help and try to potentially change people's lives so mm -hmm. time is important it's very limited that's right we gotta take advantage of it anything else you want to talk about or is that right, it for so the we, day so to reiterate the societal standards that are keeping you poor. Number one, job, traditional job, only. College. College. Loans. And student loans. Mm -hmm. A big house. With just you in with it. With just you in it. Or your significant other. Or your significant, you know, whatever. Not house hacking. Not house hacking. Four. Number four, uh, car. a nice car. Mm -hmm. Five, traditional schooling. And traditional schooling. And weddings. And, um, and weddings. Like sla I, college, wedding college slash, slash school. Well, is the same. Wedding slash life experiences, like going big. Oh, yeah, then you got. Uh, Spending big on one-time events. One-time events, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. All right, guys. And if you can eliminate those from your life and switch that into investing and buying assets instead of liabilities, you will change your life. I'm Nate. I'm Meredith. And this is the So What You Want to Talk About podcast. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe. Comment. Down below. Share. <laughs> do all of it. Ugh, just do it all. Let us know what you <laughs> thought about what we're talking about. You know, um, We'd love some feedback. Let us know down below what you want us to talk about next. We're here to yeah. help. This uh, is the Sue. So... What you want to talk about. What you want to talk about podcast and we are out peace